All right, we are sitting at a setup that looks very unfamiliar, possibly, and I welcome all of you to this very special episode of Conversations Cafe podcast, where we are joined with none other than Acharya Prashant ji. Thank you very much, sir, for giving us time. Thank you very much for Most calling welcome. us in here. Most welcome. And it looks like a place which is like a knowledge mandir, <laughs> and I am hoping that we get to learn some things from you, and I. Sit here uh, on behalf of all the people who probably are listening to this, who are students, who are professionals, who want to learn something about their lives, themselves, and dig deeper into the learning. Um, I'm glad to be having this conversation. Thank you very much, uh, sir. I'm going to take back, take you back to one of those crutches that you mentioned, probably which is the pillar or the foundation of your life. I'm going to take you to the past a little bit for our audience, for them to understand. Sure. Who uh, Acharya Prashant is? So tell me a little bit. Uh, have what has been your growing up years when you were a kid, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know a lot of these ideas that we all have in our lives. The germination or the formation happens when we are a, uh, we are a child, right? And how our parents form us or mold us, or our teachers mold us. What was it for you? See, I. I had the good fortune to be um, protected from um, trivia, more or less. Not that I could absolutely escape it, uh, but uh, uh, I could have good company in the form of books. Right. My late father was quite a learned man, and. Uh, in his own very silent way, he ensured uh, that I was insulated from a lot of nonsense. Mm. So, no gibberish, uh, not the usual kind of television or movies or any of that. Uh, books is what I had. Not that I was uh, not a sociable kid. Mm. I had friends. I was quite mischievous. Uh, I was doing all those things in the school that uh, most of the naughty ones do. Right. Uh, but back home, uh, uh, I had great books to lean on. And uh, a lot of them I actually uh, couldn't even comprehend at that age. I'm talking uh, of the age when I was 6 or 8 or 10 or 12. Uh, that was the time when I, when I took to reading. So those were my growing up years. Um, academics, obviously, that was a priority. I was doing well at school. But besides academics, there was a, there was a lot of miscellaneous reading. Hmm. Uh, not organized in any sense. Everything coming from all possible random directions. Right. So four pages of history, then, then two articles on current affairs, then something from science and technology, then something on the important wars that India has fought, then something about the greatest scientific discoveries that have happened across the world, um, all kinds of things in both the languages, Hindi and English. So poetry, a lot of it, poetry, um, novels, um, um, anthologies of various uh, shades, um so so that that's what i distinctly remember about uh, i was reading a lot right I was reading a lot. Uh, if i have to ask you uh, you mentioned a lot of information was coming from the books but from different sources right for kids today a lot of this information is coming probably from internet yeah. which probably is unregulated by their parents <clears throat> and a lot of this information uh, probably is doing more harm then good, right? What exactly do you think is happening that probably was not happening in your case? I had somebody to offer me an assortment. Mm. Hmm? Right. It's not as if my father left me stranded in Darya Ganj and said, you can pick anything up and uh, go read. He already sorted out for me, not for me, it was his own library, but it was quite a qualified library. Hmm? Uh, 
not more than uh, uh, what some mm. some seven hundred or something uh, books, maybe a thousand if I include everything all over the place. Uh, but it had uh, mm. the best of jewels from across the globe and uh, spanning the ages. Mm. So I had that privilege, as I said, to be protected from trivia and, and nonsense and gossip of all kind. So today's kids, see, it's upon somebody else hmm. to offer them an enlightened choice. Obviously, choice has to be there. So I had the choice. These are these are these hundreds of books. Right. And the kid can go and, and choose and read. But even the entire inventory from which the choice is to be made has to have a certain standard. So that the parents or the teachers have to ensure. Correct. Hmm? If the kid is left to fend for herself, the results would be mixed at best, but disastrous in most cases. Right. So, so you, you cannot uh, just make it a, a free market kind of thing for an eight year old. Hmm. Somebody has to do the broader selection for the kid. And then from the broader selection, the kid can make her own choice. That's okay. But uh, this is exactly the antithesis of what exactly is happening right now. A lot mm. of these parents are allowing their kids to be on social media platforms and on Instagram. Right. See, please understand. Our normal tendency uh, is of the nature of running water. Hmm. It will look to flow towards the lowest point possible. Hmm? Uh, ascension is always a task, a challenge, it demands effort. While falling is always so easy, one just has to surrender to gravity. Right. And that's something found not only in kids, but in every human being. Uh, it's easy to gain weight, for example, and difficult to lose it. It's, it's easy to be revengeful or, or uh, full of hatred or ignorance and difficult to be forgiving, considerate, compassionate or learned. Mm. So all the, all the real things, all the really lovely and beautiful things in life, they come at a price. One has to pursue them arduously. One has to put himself into it and there is the effort that is needed. If you leave kids to you know, look after themselves, they will flow the waterway. Yeah. They will choose the worst kind of thing that, that can uh, come to them. Hmm. So, and that's something that even the parents know because the parents too will go the same way Unless there is the pressure of responsibility or the pressure of love. Yeah. These are the things that make us rise against our biological nature, against the, against the material gravity. Hmm. Otherwise, we are all just de facto animals, animals with a bit of intellect. Right. And uh, we, will, we will never choose uh, the, the real things in life. We'll choose lust over love. Huh? We will we'll choose uh, uh, consumption over moderation. Hmm? Uh, we'll choose self-gratification uh, over, uh, let's say, compassion towards others. Uh, so you leave a person uneducated and unattended and to hope that the fellow will understand and learn and rise on his own is simply wishful thinking. Right. It's not going to happen. And even if it's going to happen, it would be one in a million cases. Mm. Mm? That's too much of a stretch and, uh, mm, uh, and a very odd kind of bet. Right. Did you want to be com become an engineer or your parents wanted you to be? No, I had no special inclination towards engineering. It's just that uh, I was very clear I didn't like the shape of the world as it uh, looked to me. Right. Uh, I didn't like uh, how ignorant we all were. 
I saw that there was an unfinished agenda because I had been reading about the about the greats from all fields science and technology sports politics the fighters uh, in the freedom struggle and all these people I, and I could clearly see that their work is not yet finished mm. Mm. and even from first hand experience uh, I could see how how the uh, world around is and uh, I was a sensitive kid hmm I think st- I still am uh, both a kid and sensitive. So, so it hurt hmm? when you look at the world around and you see uh, the the kind of lovelessness and treachery and uh, all those things. So, so I could see that all this needs to change. So, in my limited knowledge. we are talking of the late 80s and the early 90s yeah that's when uh, i was in class 7th 8th 9th 10th so in my limited uh, knowledge uh, the civil services mm. the ias in particular was the place where one could uh, bring about uh, social change a uh, social change and that was also influenced by the fact that both on uh, my maternal side and my father's side uh, we had uh, bureaucrats in the family mm. so i thought of going that way and it would appear a bit amusing today but the only reason i went to uh, the iits was because we used to have a magazine called csr competition success review i don't know whether it's still published uh, so that would contain the interviews of all the uh, upsc toppers mostly right. so i was uh, i was quite a regular with that magazine for several years and i very soon uh, saw that most of these toppers are coming from the iits hmm. that was what was happening in the early 90s right so i said that means that if you have to become an ias you need to be an iit <laughs> <laughs> so 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 i said fine so after class 10th one has to pick something hmm. it's not that i was especially um, uh, focused on pcm in fact i had a greater love for uh, for biology right i loved history and geography as well i loved the languages uh, especially hindi so it's not as if i was uh, made uh, to be an engineer right uh, but i took up pcm uh, just because that was the gateway to niit so pcm was chosen so that i could get into an iit and iit was chosen so that i could get into ies <laughs> yes. and, and that's how it happened but don't you don't you think or don't you feel that it was a borrowed dream that you had like a lot of people do the way was borrowed the dream was not because the dream still lives on hmm i'm still uh, uh, doing uh, what uh, uh, what i was uh, thinking of doing when i was what 10 or 12 or something hmm. obviously in a more refined way obviously i understand the world better and the work has shaped up uh, more clearly more beautifully but i wanted to bring about a change i was very clear the way this earth is it cannot go on like this hmm. the way uh, we people are uh, this is not uh, uh, this is not at all in uh, proportion to our potential so things had to be changed and uh, that was the dream if you want to call it dream uh, that still is the dream hmm. Hmm? we we have to be better individuals and if we are better individuals the shape of things around us the systems the 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 economy the education system the politics international relations um, the application of science the future of technology all of it would change our arts our literature all of it would change right i might sound a little atrocious here but i really thought that i should ask this question to you uh you know people say that uh, you make films films don't change anything right they don't change society they don't change people's mindset they don't change how they uh, are supposed to think right because their parents probably have raised them in a certain way and that's what they have learned and that's what they're going to do so how much can you change the things that you're doing right now 
right or for that matter people who either motivate or uh, teach or make people understand the philosophies of life how do you think that can make a bigger impact in life and do you think that it's possible no we are doing it every day so it's not a matter of thought or conjecture anymore hmm i'm seeing lives change in thousands if not millions every day in front of my own eyes we are doing it right. we have actually done it so so it's not as if it's a pipe dream or a mere vision i'm 45 now and if i'm not doing it today hmm. it would be too late so it's actually materializing it's just that a lot of it is probably not yet out in the public domain right it's not yet making big news hmm. so people do not yet know of it but uh, with uh, all humility uh, i can say that uh, um the number of people for example who have been turned vegan the number of uh, of girls and women who have uh, now Uh, dare to uh, with with courage um, challenge their bondages the number of young people who have uh, who have chosen to live uh, rather meaningful lives and discard the well trodden path that number easily runs into several lakhs wow several lakhs and that's not a, a mere uh, momentary change people have taken irreversible steps people have moved to places and they would never come down from give me one example if i may it's very difficult to give one example <laughs> because there are so many uh, how do i how do i cite a, i mean um, something that's very close to you something where you felt that you know this is why I just download the achar prashant app hmm. just download the achar prashant app and there you go to the community section and you have live testimonials streaming in at the rate of one every 5 minutes wow one every 5 minutes hmm so so that's what right and that app has uh, more than a million downloads more than a million downloads and live testimonials streaming in at the rate of one every 5 minutes brilliant <laughs> I think that that answers uh, the kind of question that I had in mind but